Wings, Mimi G here with another sew along as part of the Mimi G for Michael Levine collaboration. Today we're going to be working with McCall's 6848. Let's get started. Now McCall's pattern 6848 has a romper, a pair of shorts, a little tank, and a t-shirt. This uh, sew along is going to be for the romper. A romper that I think you could wear outside of the house depending on the fabric and length of your shorts. If you like them really short, hey, go ahead, do you. Um, they're a little too short for me, so I am going to lengthen my shorts, and I'm going to show you how I did that. So we're going to do the romper, and so of course the first thing you're going to need is this pattern. You're also going to need some pins, a safety pin, some pattern weights or washers. I get these from my local home improvement store. A seam ripper in case you make a mistake and you have to uh, un undo your seams. A marking pen for a uh, fabric, a ruler if you plan to lengthen your shorts, and then two scissors, one for paper and one for fabric. Now for fabric, you're going to need to use a lightweight cotton or a crepe. You can even use a jersey. A matte jersey would be great. I'm going to be using a rayon. I love rayon. Um, it feels really good on the body. It's really lightweight, really flowy, and really comfortable, especially for sleepwear. So. Now that you know all of the tools that you need, we're going to go over all of the pattern pieces that you need to cut out. Now you know it wouldn't be a Mimi G tutorial unless I gave you a second option for this pattern. So if you don't want to make the romper and don't want the shorts, you can turn that romper into a dress. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. I have already cut out all of my pattern pieces, so let's just go over them really quick. We're working with view B, which is the romper, and so the pattern pieces you need to cut for that is uh, piece number 12. Now you don't cut this out of fabric, you cut this piece out of elastic. This is an elastic guide to let you know, according to your size, how big your elastic needs to be. So just cut that out and set it aside. We'll cut our elastic later, which is another thing you're going to need, elastic, half inch wide. Uh, you're going to cut out piece number seven, which is the upper back. Now the upper back piece, you'll notice, is not cut on the fold, so I have two pieces for the back. So cut out piece number seven in your size. Now because it is a romper and intended for sleepwear, I'm going to make mine just a little, long, a little larger than I normally would. I could probably cut out the extra small and that would fit fine, but I want it to be comfortable and kind of a loungy feel. So I'm going to go ahead and make the small. Now you're also going to need to cut out pattern number six, pattern piece number six, which is the uh, upper front. And this is cut on the fold, so it's just one piece that we cut on the fold of the fabric. If you've watched any of my other uh, tutorials on YouTube, um, you'll see how I uh, fold my fabric and what I mean by on the fold of the fabric if you just kind of want to review a couple things. You're also going to need to cut out your uh, binding. We have armhole binding and then we have neck binding. So you're going to cut out piece number nine. You're going to cut out two pieces for your arm binding, one for each arm. You're also going to cut out one long piece, which is pattern piece number eight, and this is the neck binding. Now, one thing to remember when you're cutting out all of your pattern pieces is you want to make sure that you make all of the markings, you transfer any dots, any triangles that you see, you make a small clip at all of your notches, which is those triangles on the sides of your pattern pieces, because that will help you keep track of how everything should go together. They help in construction to tell you this piece goes to this piece and this is where it attaches. Now regarding the shorts, I'm going to show you my front pattern piece, which is cut in two pieces. If you look at your pattern piece number 10 for the lower front, you'll notice that there's two lines and it says lengthen or shorten here. This is where you can add length or even shorten your shorts if you needed to. And so what I do is I cut them out, I lay them on my fabric, and then I spread it apart. Two inches is what I lengthen mine, which I think is fine. So what I do is I mention, uh, measure the space in between and then I place my pattern weights. And this negative space here, I just pretend that there's a pattern piece there. And so I just cut all the way around. 
that's the easiest way to do it so if you want to lengthen your um, your shorts all you're going to do is cut across this line you're going to decide how much longer you want your shorts to be an inch two inches a half inch whatever so let's say you only want it to lengthen by an inch you just spread it apart one inch on your fabric before cutting and then you just place your pattern weight so it doesn't move and then you just cut all the way around that's it so I have done that to both my front and my back so if you lengthen the front of your shorts you want to make sure that you lengthen the back of your shorts too so I've cut both of my short pieces out this is the front and I have also cut out two pieces for my back everything for the top stays the same the only thing that changes is that instead of using the shorts we're going to cut out two rectangles to create a skirt and then you're going to sew it along with me the same way that you would if you were doing the shorts so let me just show you really quickly what to cut out if you're going to make the skirt you're going to cut out all the same pieces again for the top the binding all of that you're going to cut out the skirt portion out of some rectangles that we're just going to draw onto our fabric so no need to cut the short port the shorts uh, pattern pieces what you're going to do is you're going to cut the front one on the fold so as you can see my fabric is folded onto itself the fold is facing me and i'm going to place my pattern piece directly onto my fabric and i'm going to make a line the width of this pattern piece I'm going to set it aside. Now I need to decide how long I want my skirt, so I'm just going to measure from my belly button down however long I want that skirt. For me, I'm going to make it about 22 inches. So I'm going to measure down. Twenty-two inches. And I'm going to make a little mark. And then I'm just going to make a straight line. and a straight line all the way down. And then you're just gonna cut it out. And you have the front panel for your skirt. You're going to do the same exact thing with the back piece, except the back is not cut on the fold. You're going to be cutting two pieces. So I'm going to fold my fabric the way I did for the front piece. I'm just not going to cut it on the fold. Straighten out your fabric. Grab your back pattern piece and just don't place it on the fold. You're going to take your marker or your uh, chalk pen. I prefer these. And you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to make a line across the width of it, except we're not cutting on the fold. And then you're going to go all the way down the 22 inches or however long you want your your skirt portion to be come down to your knees your ankles whatever you're going to make a line across oops and then all the way down And you're just going to cut around. Now, where we just cut off that little fold part, I want you to make two little snippets. Just let you know that that's going to be your center back.
Okay, if you're doing the skirt, you have two pieces for the back and one piece for the front. You're going to place the two pieces for the back with right sides together, align your notch and sew that center back seam together using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then the rest of the uh, sew along is exactly the same as for the romper, so just follow along with me. And when we get to a part where you need to do something different if you're doing the skirt, I will mention it in the video. Now that I have all of the pieces, we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to start piecing our romper together. Okay, we're going to start with pieces seven, uh, six, seven, and eight. So we're starting with the neckband, the front uh, upper, and the back upper. So we're going to start first with pieces number seven, which is the upper back. And there are two pieces that we need to sew the center back together. So if you transferred all of your notches on your center back you should have uh, three little slashes like this. Three little notches. And that signifies that's the center back. So with right sides facing you're going to align your notches. Those three little notches that you have. And you're going to pin. Always start pinning at your notches. You guys hear me say that over and over again and then pin at the top and at the bottom. And then we're going to be using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to sew together the center back. If you have a serger, go ahead and finish off the edges. Uh, if you don't have a serger, you can finish the edges off with a zigzag stitch. That'll work just fine. And if you have a fabric that doesn't unravel at all or fray, you don't need to worry about finishing it unless you, um, you know, want to or have the ability to serge, then of course I would serge those edges. Once you finish the edge of your seam allowance, either with a serger or a zigzag stitch or nothing at all, um, take it to your ironing table and then press it to uh, press it all to one direction. So press your seam allowance flat. You always want to make sure that you press a seam after you sew a seam. So go ahead and take it to your ironing table and give this a good press. And then we're going to sew our back piece to our front piece at shoulders and side seams. As you can see, I have surged my edges and I have pressed it to one side. Now I'm going to take my front piece, my upper front piece, which is piece number eight, and that piece was cut on the fold, and I'm going to pin it at the shoulders with right sides facing. Align your notches. You should have a notch at your shoulder. So you're going to align your notch and pin one shoulder. You're going to do the same thing to the other shoulder. So match up your notches and pin. And then do the same thing for the sides. Your sides should have two notches that match up. So go ahead and pin at your notch and then at the top and at the bottom and then pin the other side the same exact way. Now that you have pinned both shoulders and your sides, we're going to go ahead and sew using, of course, a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to sew across each shoulder and each side. Now sew all the way down each side. Continue sewing and do the other side the same exact way. Then finish off your edges either with a serger or your zigzag stitch. Give it a good press and we'll continue. Okay, so we're going to now work on the neckband. And so, um, as you can see, I have already finished off the shoulders. Um, the seam allowances, I've serged them already and I've given them a good press both on the shoulders 
and on my sides. So we're going to set the top um, to the side for one minute and we're going to work on pattern piece number eight. This is the neckband. Now I want to make sure that you transfer all of these markings before you get started. So if, in case you did not, I want you to go back, lay this pattern piece on top of your fabric piece and I want you to make a dot or a little clip everywhere that you see a notch that corresponds to your size. Now the reason that you need to do this is because this will give you um, an indication of where your neckband uh, is attaching to your neck of your bodice. Now for example, the triangles meet at your shoulder seams. So you want to make sure that you transfer that to your uh, pattern, to your fabric, so that way when we get to the shoulder you know that this marking on your fabric should match up with the uh, shoulder seam of your top and then um, also the center front you should make a little marking and on the other notches because on the top of your front bodice you should have clipped a little notch which corresponds to these notches here so you just always want to make sure that you transfer all of your markings from your pattern piece to your fabric so we're going to set that aside and I have already done the markings on my fabric, so we're going to sew together to create one big band. So place your um, band together, right sides facing, and we're going to close it by stitching 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And you want to go ahead and press this down. You do not need to finish uh, the edges on this because this is going to be encased. So you don't need to worry about that, but you do want to press this flat. So you want to press your seam open. Once you press your flat, your seam open and flat like this, what we're going to do is um, we're going to fold it in half. And I'm going to have you press this before we continue. Now it doesn't say that on the directions um, in the instructions. And we're actually going to attach our neckband just a little differently than it uh, has us uh, do in the instructions for your pattern. This method for me is just much easier. And in the pattern instructions, it has you slip stitch um, the, the edge to your top when we're done attaching it, but I don't want to have to go through all that slip stitching. <laughs> so I'm going to do kind of a faster version for you guys. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold this in half. You're going to make sure that it's aligned all the way around and you're going to press it in half all the way. So you want to get this nice and pressed. As you can see, I have folded it over all the way around and I've given it a really good press. Now, the one thing I want you to keep in mind is that you don't have to attach your neck binding the way that I'm about to. You are free to use the pattern instruction uh, method if you so choose. Um, I just really prefer this method. I think it's faster and it uh, helps me avoid any hand sewing at the end of my project. So, now that you have it pressed, if you're following my instructions, then just go ahead and follow along with me. We're going to start aligning our notches. So what we're going to do first is... We're going to turn our top right sides out and working with the center front, you should have those two notches that I mentioned. You can see them there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our band and instead of placing it on top like this, like we would normally do, we're going to do it the other way. So I want you to find your center front notches and I want you to start to pin. So I'm going to pin right side of my band to the wrong side of my uh, fabric and I'm going to pin aligning my center front notches. And I'm going to pin I'm going to find my other notch and I'm going to pin there. you're going to pin your triangle to your uh, shoulder seams so do that for both shoulders so you're going to be aligning your center back seam with the center back seam of your band that's how you know where your center back is Okay, so I have pinned 
both my front notches. I have pinned at my shoulder seams and I have pinned at my center back. Now you'll notice that the top is a little bigger than the neckband. Um, so as we're sewing, we're going to be stretching so that we can fit our neckband onto our top. So we're gonna start with the center back. So you're going to be using a half inch seam allowance. And what you're gonna do is you're going to be starting at the center back, put your needle in. Okay, once you put your needle in, I want you to go ahead and stretch out your band so that you have it in your hand. And you're gonna make just a couple of snips into the raw edge, right? So it's folded here. And this is the side we're gonna be sewing on. So you wanna go ahead and make just a couple of snips like I did here, I made five little snippets. And the reason I did that is to allow my neckband to stretch and fit onto my top as I'm sewing. Now using a half inch seam allowance, we're gonna to start to sew, slightly stretching the neckband as we're going along. Just the neckband. Now try and keep your uh, neckband and the edge of your fabric for your top aligned as you're sewing. For example, if you get to the end to, or to your shoulder and your band is still uh, not big enough, you can literally just make two more little snippets and that will ease your band onto your top. Continue sewing and snipping where needed until you get to the center back. Okay, so now that we have sewn our band onto our top. And as you can see, if you're looking at the front of your, um, your blouse, you can see that we've sewn the binding to the inside, right? Now, normally you would have attached this binding to the right side of your fabric. Then what would have happened is on the wrong side of your blouse, you would have had to turn this over and as instructed in the pattern, hand sew all the way around. So that's a lot of hand sewing for me to really want to do. So what I'm going to do, so what I did was I had you attach it the opposite way. That way, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and you're going to press your seam towards your neckband. So we're going to give this a good press all the way around, making sure that your seam allowance is pressed towards your band. Then what happens is we're going to fold over so that the folded edge of our neckband is just past our threading. Now we can clearly see that, so it makes it a lot easier to do. And what we do is we go ahead and fold it over and we can sew right onto the edge using our sewing machine as opposed to having to do it by hand. So the first thing we're gonna do is press this all the way around with your seam allowance facing your binding. So as you can see, I already gave it a good press. It's nice and flat. And I went ahead and um, pressed my seam allowances towards my binding and then I what I did was I pr uh, pressed over my binding so that my folded edge was just past my stitching line so that of course we don't see it on the right side of our top and I gave it a good press all the way around it's easier to manage your binding if you press it before you sew then go ahead and start at the center back and sewing close to the edge of your fold, you're going to sew all the way around. Make sure to stretch just a little bit as you're going along. Once you're done, it accomplishes two things. One, on the wrong side of your fabric, you have a nice, clean finish. And on the outside, we have a really nicely made binding and we don't need to do any hand stitching. Now you want to give this a good press, um, but don't worry about the pressing right now. Go ahead and continue with your armholes. You're going to sew your armholes the same exact way that we did the neckband. So if you don't remember, just go ahead and rewind, um, and you're going to sew your 
armhole bands the same exact way the procedure is the same exact way so just follow along um, the same thing that we did for the neck band okay as you can see I finished my armholes um, and they look great so nicely finished on the inside and on the outside so I'm going to set this aside and we're going to start working on the shorts If you're doing the skirt version instead of the romper, there's two things you should know. One is, uh, let's say that these are your front panel and your back panel for your skirt. I've made little miniature versions. You're going to sew down the sides, on you know both sides, and you're going to attach the skirt to the top the same way that you're going to the same way I'm going to attach the shorts to my top. The only difference is you're not going to have an opening at the center front and instead you're going to do a full elastic casing meaning you're going to cut the piece of elastic the size of your waist minus a couple of inches instead of uh, the elastic cut to the guide that was in our pattern piece and so when we get to that portion of the sewing I'll stop and, and make mention of it but I just want to let you know if you're doing the skirt go ahead and take your front and back panels and sew down both sides and then continue with me um, as we attach the bottom to our top So what you're going to do is you're going to take one back short piece and one front short piece and you're going to lay them on top of each other right sides together and you're going to pin at the inner leg and you're going to sew that together using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And you're going to do the same thing for the other one. So we have one front leg to one back leg attached at the um, inner leg. And so you're going to do the same thing to the other one. Right sides together, one front, one back. Go ahead and finish this off with your serger if you have a serger. Okay, I have surged my seam allowance and I pressed it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to lay this um, with right sides together matching the inner leg seam first. And you're going to pin. And then match the notch for the center back. You should have two notches. So go ahead and pin there and then pin at the top and then what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing for the front except that if you marked your pattern pieces properly you should have two little dots right here at the center front of your shorts. Now that's because we're going to sew down to one dot, we're going to back stitch it then we're going to cut our threads and we're going to sew from this dot all the way down and we're going to leave an opening so that little piece right there is not going to get sewn it's going to be left open so that we can um, sift our elastic and our ties through it when we get to that point so I'm going to pin at the top and I'm going to pin where my single notch is And starting at the center back, we're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way around until we get to the first dot. Okay, so I'm approaching that first little dot, and so I'm going to get to that dot, and I'm going to backstitch. And then I want you to stop. Cut your thread and then place your needle at the next dot and finish sewing. Back stitch. Leaving that little space open. Now you can go ahead and finish off your edges. Make sure that if you serge it that you leave this little opening uh, free because we need to have it free so you can surge then stop and then continue to surge all the way around uh, your seam allowance. 
Okay, so we have um, sewn our entire crotch. I went ahead and pressed it and finished off my edge. And what I did was I just made a slit up until I reached my stitching, of course not through my stitching, and I pressed that top portion open so that I could still access uh, my opening, and then the rest I went ahead and just surged. So now that we've done that, we're going to sew the sides of our shorts. And so the way you're gonna do that is you're going to pin at one side. Now I'm gonna pin at the top, and then I'm going to look for the marking, that little dot, right before the curve, right? So it, it's having you stop there. So go ahead and make a, put your pin in there and we're going to sew down till we get to this uh, little dot. The reason is because this is a curve so we're going to sew that as a seam allow, as a hem. And so we're going to go ahead and start sewing from the top and so all the way down till you get to that dot where we've pinned. Now I'm going to take my scissors and uh, maybe about, uh, I don't know, a quarter inch above where I stop stitching, I'm going to make a snip as close to the stitching as possible without going through the stitching. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to surge from this point all the way up and I'm gonna leave this free and you're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side so go ahead and pin at the top and then you're going to find that little dot that you should have marked and you're going to pin there going to sew 5 eighths of an inch and a quarter inch above where you stop stitching you're going to make a slit until you get to the stitching but not through the stitching and um, finish it off with the serger Okay, as you can see, I have surged my edge of my side seam, and then what I did was I individually sewed the edge of the pant leg, right, of the short leg. That way, that's going to be the hem, and so I want a nice, clean uh, finish. If you don't have a serger, it's fine. Like I said, you can zigzag your edges, um, but I want a clean hem, and so I went ahead and surged mine. Now sewing uh, around a curve like this can be a little tricky, especially if you've never done it. So as you can see, the hem of the shorts is curved. And so an easy way, or easier way I should say, to um, sew around this curve instead of trying to do it by hand, which is going to not work, <laughs> you're going to use a long stitch. I'm using a four. A four length stitch so you just if you have a four go ahead and put it at a stitch length of four and you're going to sew don't back stitch around that curve at five eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance so you're going to make sure that your needles five eighths of an inch away from the edge of your fabric and you're going to sew just until you clear that rounded edge you're going to pull your threads. So now I have a stitching line, right? As you can see, I have a stitching line around that curve. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pull it. What I want is to remove some of that ease in the corner, right? In that curve so that it naturally will curve to the inside. That's our goal. So I'm just going to pull a little bit till it creates a bit of a gather, as you can see in that curve and then depending on how big a curve you may need to take a little bit more but I just want it so that when I turn it to the inside and press it it will go ahead and turn that corner for me and so we're going to turn it over and then press okay so I'm going to show you how to do one and then you're going to do all the others the same exact way so I'm going to go ahead and pull on my threads As you can see, once you pull the gathers, it automatically takes up that ease. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn it over and you're going to press following your stitching. And just go slow.
Use your fingers to hold down the excess. And now you've pressed your curve. Now you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, if you have pressed all of your curves, um, I went ahead and finished pressing the entire hem 5 eighths of an inch. I have pressed um, my curves. And now we're going to sew working on the right side of our fabric. So what you're going to do is you're going to place your fabric about a half inch from the split and with your presser foot edge against the edge of your fabric you're going to sew all the way around. Go slower around your curves So half inch, put your needle in and then pivot across to where your other stitching began. And now you've sewn all the way around the hem of your shorts and you have a nice clean curve. Okay, we're going to attach our shorts to our top. And if you're doing the skirt um, version, you're going to attach it at the waist the same exact way that I'm doing now. And so what you're going to do is you're going to turn your top right sides out, okay? And you're going to locate the center back seam. And what you're going to do is you're literally going to slip it inside of your shorts. The shorts are turned right sides out, so you want right sides facing. Now the reason I'm doing it this way because I want to make sure that I'm attaching the back of the top to the back of the shorts. And then attach or uh, pin at your side seams, aligning your seams. And pin it. And do both your side seams first. Put your top in there. There we go. And now we can pin our center front. And remember, our, so we know it's our center front because if you're doing the shorts, you have that little hole there. So you're going to go ahead and pin. And we're going to sew this together using a 7 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to be starting at the center back. Okay, I have finished the edge of my casing and I have pressed it down towards my shorts. So I've given it a good press. We're going to sew all the way around close to the edge. Make sure that your casing is facing towards your pants towards the shorts. If you're sewing the skirt version of this, you are going to leave about a half inch opening. So you're going to sew, backstitch, sew all the way around, leave a half inch opening because you're going to insert your elastic through here, um, through the opening inside as opposed to the opening that was created in our shorts. Okay, now that we have sewn our casing down, all we need to do is work on our elastic. If you're doing the skirt, you are going to be cutting the elastic, the length of your uh, waist, minus about two or three inches. 
you're going to um, take your elastic and you're going to put your safety pin through it and you're going to sift it all the way through your casing and when you come out at the other end you're going to overlap your edges by sewing them together and then close your your opening if you're doing the romper we are going to do things a little differently so one we're going to take your ribbon you should have two pieces that are 24 inches long and you're going to overlap it with your elastic by 5 eighths of an inch and we're going to sew that down just back stitch a couple of times and you're going to do that on both ends now you're going to take one end of your ribbon and you're going to put your safety pin through it like this and working in that opening that we have where those little dots were we left that opening you're going to put your safety pin in and you're going to pull it all the way through to the other side once you get it back around you're just going to pull it undo your safety pin don't worry about the frayed edge because we'll cut that off and you're going to pull Once you have both of your ribbons through, you can go ahead and if your edges are frayed, you can snip them off. And that is all there is to it. We are all done with our romper. That's all there is to it, you guys. Now all that's left is for you to press your neckline if you didn't do it properly the first time. Now sometimes, you need to take your iron and you need to shape your neckline. So sometimes when you do binding, you'll get like a ripple or it lays off of your body and not flat. And that's because you need to manipulate it just a little bit and you need to press it until it behaves. And so what I like to do is I like to lay out my romper or whatever it is that I'm doing that has a binding neckline. And what I do is I press it using my steam into shape. And so that's all that you need to do is you just need to press it and shape it until it starts to lay flat. That is the easiest and the best way to make sure that your binding is always nice and flat and that it lays against your body. Now that's all there is to it. I can't wait to see all of the amazing rompers that you guys are going to make. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.